Trove's combat and how you build classes can be broken up into three categories. Speed farming, where you're trying to complete dungeons as fast as possible, which means you need to have a class that has a good base movement speed and you will be sacrificing damage for more speed. Delves, which is a combination of damage and health. In most cases, you need to be really tanky to be able to survive the long drawn out gauntlet. And Leviathans are all about damage. You don't need to survive if you can kill it before it kills you. The efficiency of a class can basically be broken down into these three categories. Some will be stronger than others in one area and weaker in another. Another video of mine that I would recommend is the classes cheat sheet. It's basically a visual graph that kind of shows where each character fits in the spectrum. At the end of it all, I would always recommend that you play the class that you enjoy, rather than picking something specifically because it's efficient. So assuming you've picked out your main, let's get started with the more detailed tutorial. So we'll start off by saying that the Chloromancer used to be god tier and in fact was one of the strongest boss killers in the game. That has since changed as it did end up getting nerfed quite a bit, but that doesn't mean that you should completely underestimate the class. I, I know that's kind of a theme of these videos, but frankly speaking, people underestimate classes in this game far too often. I will say up front, you're probably not going to be using the Chloromancer as a speed farmer. I mean, you can if you absolutely want to main it, but frankly speaking, this is a boss killing class and that's it. So subclass ability is just going to be the standard same old subclass abilities you would use on any of the classes, with Solarian being pretty much the best one just because of that extra light value and the burning damage over time effect is, I mean, it's okay. It's not great, uh, but I always end up using Knight subclass ability just because the extra flask capacity usually equals to a lot of damage overall, just in terms of being able to chug all of your flasks. Uh, Bard apparently is okay for speed farming, same with Lunar Lancer, although I don't know if I would recommend those necessarily for the Chloromancer. You can kind of just experiment though, even though even in these videos, I kind of talk about like, oh, these are the best subclass abilities. A lot of these have been slowly tweaked over the years, and so some of them are a lot better than I remember and then a lot of people remember, but people just don't really experiment that much, myself included, because once you find something that works, you just stay with it. As for your gear stat priority, you're going to focus on attack speed because obviously that's where a bulk of your damage comes from and energy regen will allow you to throw down more plants but you can only throw down a limited amount of plants in general. So in most cases, I would still suggest you go for crit damage, but you can experiment, it's up to you. It's just the crit damage will more than likely give you more overall damage. And then if you really wanna use this class for speed farming, you're gonna stay with the attack speed, but swap the crit damage off for movement speed instead, because that'll allow you to travel from dungeon to dungeon faster, and you won't need that extra crit damage as much as you need the attack speed. Now for the Chloromancer subclass abilities, there are a couple options. There's gonna be Cyto Barrier, which creates a shield at low health that reduces damage. I, I can attest to this being a pretty useless ability. The shield is not that great, especially in consideration, you know, compared to Cubic Curtain or whatever. Weird Growth, after dealing damage gain, a buff that spawns plants randomly nearby for a short time. This one is all right. Uh, the problem is that you still have the limited amount of plants and this does not increase that cap, I don't think. Uh, it might be a separate thing, but most of all, you're just gonna be focusing on Gatling, Gatling, Gatling. So that's gonna make it so that basic attacks have a chance to spawn a mini green Gatling and mini green Gatlings, Gatlings have a chance to spawn mini, mini green Gatlings. And that's just going to end up giving you a huge burst of damage when those trigger. Unfortunately, it is random and it's a pretty low rate. Also, the Gatlings are incredibly stupid because once they pick a target, if that target even slightly moves out of the way, they're gonna shoot in a straight line, which I find really annoying because the enemies in this game actually have pretty decent tracking for where you're going to be. So I don't know why that doesn't work for the enemies as well. Your best banner and slot is of course going to end up being the torches from Leviathans, whether it be the low tier or the high tier, but also the uh, Saber Skull, which I currently have on my Draco, that's why I swapped. I like this one because it's the magic damage one, but it also gives you the movement speed. And as I will attest in all of my videos, movement speed is incredibly important to me. I don't like going slow in this game. Point being, maybe you prefer one of the Aura Perma Torches 
more so than the movement speed, but that's entirely up to you. For your ally, you have a couple different options. There's going to be Starry Skyfire, which is going to be probably the big one that you'll use because of the magic damage, the light and the cooldown recovery speed. For this ally, you come from the hub, go over to the Grand Orrery, and you're going to end up having this node anyways because of the light value, but it's also going to be what gives you Starry Skyfire. Orchin, if you want to be a speedy class, because this will give you light movement speed and magic damage, which from the hub area is going to be located down here in my uncle's basement, which is going to end up being Orchion right here. It's a Paragon ally, which means you need to have Trovian loops from Paragon levels and you got to have a Paragon mark as well. But uh, yeah, it, it's pretty expensive to get this amongst all of the other items, but you'll do it slowly over time. There's also going to end up being the Mini Water Mana Beast, which as far as I've heard is the highest damage allies in the game, just because that extra magic damage and crit damage combined with the light equals more damage than the other allies that have more light but less crit damage. So from the hub, you're going to go over into the crafter's corner and you're going to go down into the basement. And unfortunately, you'll have to get pretty much maxed out with the Mystic Arts. I don't even have these allies yet because I'm not really going out of my way to farm for the very, very specific elemental dust that I need, or should I say the elemental mana. So going into the skill tree, there's gonna be a couple abilities you're gonna prioritize. In my opinion, you would go for the Life Leech node first and foremost, because that's going to end up obviously giving you Life Leech, which makes most classes in the game almost invincible. And then again, I prioritize the movement speed nodes the light nodes are very, very important, and the damage nodes. You would just end up following the magic damage tree instead of me, which has the physical damage tree because I'm main shadow hunter. Now then for your flask and vial, pretty much all of these that I have favorited are going to be your best option. Death Defying is the one that I usually go for just because I'm lazy and I don't wanna to have to even bother pressing the Q key. This way it also saves you the animation time of your character drinking the flask. But in most cases, you want to use the buff from the flask. So you can use the Elysian Bandolier if you absolutely just need to keep chugging. Um, Vampiric is OK. Vial of Unleashed Power I don't think really works on Chloro as much as it used to, but I could be wrong. Valorous is all right. Conjurer's Crucible is a good one just because if you have high enough magic find, you can literally regain your flask faster than you spend them per dungeon because magic find will trigger and you'll end up restocking your flask. As for the emblems, uh, unfortunately with Trove's new end game, you know, the, the long shade area, it, it's kind of forced all of us to always use the arcane emblem. Uh, once upon a time, there was a point where you didn't have to use arcane emblem and you could experiment. But now, since we just need raw damage, you're kind of locked into always using this one. And then for your side uh, emblem, that's kind of up to you. You could use trailblazing if you're speed farming Zealous if you need the energy unyielding, if you need the survivability, Chromatic Emblem will be the best in most cases because that'll allow you to utilize your abilities more often because of the reduced cooldown. The mid game stats that you wanna to work towards and then move up from with the Chloromancer is gonna be anywhere from 60 to 80K magic damage and then 50 to 60% crit hit with let's say 800% crit damage and you kind of just move up from there trying to keep those stats even keel it's not as important as you would think but most of all i'm saying this as a gauge in case you're noticing like one of your stats is significantly lower than the others now before we get into the gems and all of that stuff i do have to reiterate in all of these videos is your class level 30 because that should be your top priority first you shouldn't even bother focusing on the end game until you've got your class level 30 because getting your class level 30 is gonna unlock all of the gem slots and the gem slots significantly give you a huge boost in power like beyond gear and anything else gems are the cat's pajamas i don't know if that's a positive thing and then there's going to end up being the uh coefficiency of my builds which are not coefficient uh, in fact, I've been kind of dabbling behind the scenes, testing out coefficiency builds and so on and so forth. And frankly speaking, I'm not noticing much of a difference between a maxed out coefficiency class and then what I have for a lot of my builds. So take that as you will. But I'm just saying that you don't have to follow the stats that I'm going to present to you to the letter. You can kind of mix and match it up a little bit. And that's OK, because it's not going to make as significant a difference as you would think. 
So I'm gonna be focusing on my gems on my Draco just because I'm too lazy to swap them all to the Chloromancer, but you'll still just build them all the same. For all of your empowered colored gems, with the cosmic gems being their own separate category, you're going to focus on getting two pearls or boosts into magic damage, one boost or pearl into crit damage, and then no boost into crit hit. You're pretty much gonna focus on that for all of your empowered gems, excluding the cosmic gem. And then for the lesser gems, the way that I like to make this digestible for you guys is I say three of them this way, three of them this way, because you have a total of six lesser cause uh, lesser elemental gems the cosmic gems again are completely segmented off so three of your lesser gems are going to follow the same stats as the empowered gems so two boost magic one boost crit damage no boost crit hit and then the other three are going to be two boosts into crit damage one boost magic damage no boost crit hit and when you end up getting your crit hit to 100%, you can pretty much cycle any extra crit hit off into max health to give you a little bit more survivability. Although again, it's not super important and you're gonna be squishy in this game anyway. As for the cosmic gems, all of them are going to be the exact same wherein you need every boost into light and then no boost into crit damage and magic damage. So for your empowered gem abilities, you could go for the class gem, it's not mandatory just because when Empowered Growth is active, your ultimate, uh, Floromancer heals nearby allies and plants. It's really, really bad, the scaling of that. So it's not mandatory. I would still suggest you go for the class gem just because it's a really easy to get powerful Empowered gem, right? Uh, granted, it is time gated just because of the um, keys that you're going to have to spend on it if you're absolutely at the beginning of the game. But anyways, I'm just saying that you don't have to use it. I don't know. Pick your poison. It's up to you. Now, for the other Empowered Gems, I would recommend Pyro Disc for movement speed, Cubic Curtain for survivability, and uh, what's that other one? The Flower one? Apparently that one's not bad. It's kind of a secret powerhouse gem that does give you a little bit of extra damage. Is it a flower or is it snare? I don't know. Uh, and then more important than all of that is going to be the Cosmic Gem. Now you have two options here. Vampirium is going to give you Life Steal, which you don't need because of the skill tree, but it will also give you a movement speed boost. So if you really want to do speed farming, you would use Vampirium. However, if you're at the end game, the only thing that really matters is raw damage, in which case Berserker Battler is going to be the required gem. Ooh, I'm sorry that this video took so long, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't really intend on that. It was most of all just, I ended up having a little bit of a trip that I ended up going to Mexico and that kind of threw things all out of place just for me to kind of get back into the swing of things. Also, these types of videos are, uh, they're quite complex in the script that I have to follow, as well as all of the different nuance that I have to pick apart and talk about. You, you know me, I like doing good tutorials for you guys. So hopefully you found this helpful. I would very much appreciate if you left a like on the video uh, and um, you know subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can buy the merch if you want to. It's up there. It's cheaper now because I've moved it onto my new store. Uh, but I still haven't ordered any of my merch from that new store just yet because I'm still waiting on some items from my old store. Uh, point being is I've got a new store shop. It's pretty much all the same items. It's just significantly cheaper. 